My name is Mathieu Denis. I'm a co-writer and co-director of the film. Hello, I'm uh, Laurent Bélanger and I'm an actor in the movie. Hi, my name is Charlotte Aubin. I'm an actress in the movie. And uh, the film is called uh, Those Who Make Revolution Halfway Only Dig Their Own Graves. Um, it's a film that is uh, taking its, its starting point in 2012 in Montreal, in Canada. Uh, there was a big uh, student protest movement back then that made a lot of noise um, and which kind of uh, uh, collapsed uh, on itself a few months after it had started. And our film is about four fictional characters who we uh, imagine could have been very much involved in this student pro protest movement and uh, we pick up with them five years after the fact and trying to see where they're at uh, five years later uh, after having basically with, uh, they, they withdrew from society because they were uh, sad and bitter and, and angry about the outcome of their movement and uh, at the moment where we pick up with them, they, they decide that they want to try and change the world again, but this time by resorting to much more radical means. So that's the film in a nutshell. After 12 semaines de grève, d'assemblée, de manifestation, d'arrestation, de solidarité, on aboutit à quoi? Tu sais, moi aussi j'ai essayé, hein? Maintenant, tu vieillis, tu commences à avoir peur. Il faut que tu travailles, tu gagnes de l'argent, puis pour ça, tu les laisses de côté tes idées de grandeur. Ben, je m'excuse, mais moi, je dis non! Yeah! Et on n'a pas passé trois mois dans la rue pour accepter ça! Non! Non! Nous ne prendrons pas de juste milieu. Thanks for being with us today. So Laurent, Charlotte and Mathieu from uh, those who those who make revolutions halfway only dig their own graves. Sorry. <laughs> title in English, <laughs> long title. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you today. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to know if you had any links with what happened in Quebec in 2012. So if you participated in the movement or if you've seen the movement from afar and what's your personal connection to it and how, it, how did it help you to build on what you already knew? Uh, maybe I can start and then you go because uh, we're not from the same generation. So they were, and I'll let you talk about it, but they were students while this was happening. So they were involved in the events. I was, I was not a student back then, uh, but I was uh, put in, in, in contact with a lot of students because I had made with Simon, my, the co-director, we had made another film that is called Laurency, mm -hmm. and we were invited to screen it to, in uh, film student societies. And so we were uh, uh, in contact a lot with students while they were out in the streets and protesting. And, and that's actually where the idea of the film uh, came from, basically, because they were uh, very involved in that student protest movement that made a lot of noise, and then it kind of collapsed on itself at some point. And a few years afterwards, we were kind of trying to, uh, to, to imagine what had happened to all these students that we had met that were so uh, uh, energized, so committed, uh, so militant. Mm -hmm. We were wondering what had happened to them. And the film is kind of a, a fictionalized idea of what could have happened to some of them five years later. So, Yes, at that moment we were uh, at the National Theatre School together. Mm -hmm. so it's a private school, so uh, we didn't have like the old strike. We were mm -hmm. involved in the night manifestation. Mm -hmm. So. That's most of it, yeah. That's how we uh, participated uh, during the strikes at this moment, but um, it so was... You bang on some parts sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I broke too. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to come back to the idea of fiction and the idea of what you actually live through when going into, into the student association. So some parts of the movie are, are fictions, but you also base it on some of the real things that happen. So general assemblies and CEGEPs in university, but also uh, some direct action that were uh, done in the um, subway in Montreal, this, yeah. this action at the beginning of the movie. So I was wondering, how did you choose those um, actions that were already done during the, the Quebec movement, the, the Maple Spring, and why did you choose them exactly? Um, so 
I mean, the film starts from, I guess, a historic moment. And so, uh, and we didn't want to shy away from that, and we wanted to inspire ourselves by reality, by the reality of these events. Uh, and so, yes, so you see someone who goes in the subway and throws a smoke bomb in the subway. So some people uh, did that at that time. Um, but that being said, it like the film is not um, a historic account of these moments. It's really a starting point. And from the beginning, we were interested in kind of transcending this moment because it's a very it's a short historic moment when you think about it it's a few months long mm -hmm. and we're interested in starting from there but then putting that in a larger context and so uh, we wanted to put it in a historical context uh, and also in a philosophical context uh, like in the wider history of revolutionary movements mm -hmm. so that was our, our, our intent but at the same time we wanted it to obviously to stay um, uh, well we wanted it to look uh, true, so that's why we kind of inspired ourselves of some of the actual events that had happened back then. Um, so you're far away from home, you're in Berlin, you're on the other side of the pond now. How do you present this, this movie now? What, what do you think is your target public when you come here at the Berlinale? Uh, so people probably didn't know about this movement in Quebec, so how do you usually talk about the movie? Because right now I'm, I know <laughs> I'm from Quebec, so I'm just wondering. Yeah. What would be your target public? People who did, who did know about the movement, people who were part of the movement, or a broader? I think um, sometimes like rage uh, gathers some, some, uh, some good amount of people uh, and about the conflict between one generation to another. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, a lot of people um, yesterday night uh, at the premiere really, really enjoyed wow. this, how to, um, I really like when older people, they, they just, they, um, they go back in, in their youth and they, they're being sometimes nostalgic about um, like rage and uh, strikes and like, a strong position like this. And sometimes I, I think that this movie might, could separate people, could divide people, but at the same time, I, when I see like older yeah. people, uh, because it's surprising how older people seem to Correct. like the movie yeah, yeah. more than, than the young. <laughs> And, but, but I find it interesting because some, some, some do like the movie and the way it starts a new conversation about like this issue between young and uh, poor and rich. And I think like I think an, an important aspect of the film is, is uh, I mean, that's what it's saying. It's that like if there has to be social change at some point, it will not be brought forward by uh, one specific group in the society mm -hmm. it will it will happen if a large amount of people in the society kind of unite and work in, in one similar direction and for this to happen it has to transcend any you know age groups or social classes it has to be widespread and I think that's what the, the film is, is talking about and in that matter it's a film that's well that we hope uh, that can you know speak to pretty much anyone uh, mm -hmm. I mean because it's yeah I guess it's kind of um, it's a film that's that's wondering like are you I guess the question in the film is are you feeling like the world in which you live is great and it should be this way if not uh, what are you willing to do <laughs> will you just uh, stand still and wait mm -hmm. for it to change or will you will you actually try and do something concrete for it to change so and I think this question anybody should be asking that uh, to themselves right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So you must be happy that the movie, so following up on what you just said, you must be happy that the movie was selected for Generation. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about it? And how do you feel about being also selected for the Teddy Awards? So the queer list of the Berlin. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll jump in and go, then go, you can... Go, uh, go. Um, so but Generation, we're very happy about that because even though uh, I think the interesting aspect to it, and even though the film kind, I think, speaks to a you know a wide uh, <laughs> group of people, the interesting thing is that I think sometimes for younger audiences, we kind of we assume that they're a bit uh, illiterate and uh, and not interested in you know important social and political ideas, and I think it's amazing that they took on this film, <laughs> which is. Uh, all politics, all social issues, which is very uh, confrontational in, in its form. And they're trusting the younger audience to 
understand it and to be engaged by the film. And I think that's, that's really, uh, it says a lot of the people who are programming films uh, at Generation, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of the Teddy Awards, if I can, like one thing that I really like about the fact that we've been uh, uh, included in that list is that uh, I guess the film was not made with, um, uh, it's not made with the uh, idea of, um, how can I say, it doesn't have like a, like a LGBTQ focus on the film, but it's including LGBTQ uh, characters in the film, but everyone is on the same level. It's not, we're not making it an issue, and I think that's what's interesting. All our characters are on the same level, and, and, um, and that's when I, I think acceptation, uh, I don't yeah. know if that's the right word, but... Uh, uh, I don't know if you know what I mean. Yeah, but, uh, no. Feeling in included in the rest of us, about yeah. our society. <laughs> so it's like you perform equality by putting yeah. a different kind of. But like yeah, exactly. The issue, the issue of re social rejection, is also interesting in this movie. Mm -hmm. So because uh, at the same time, the character, the characters reject the rest of the society, but you feel and you understand that they all have been rejected mm. yeah. before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's that's what I think is really interesting about LGBT uh, issues right now. It's how even even today, even like in uh, in uh, Canada, like it's, it's it's easy to to say that you are totally open-minded. But what does it mean to be open-minded? And will you be open-minded to me with me if I act like a pr normal person? And what is normal? And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um, my my next question will be more for the two of you guys. Um, so this idea of violence, violence from society, but also violence of those protagonists against themselves and against the rest of society mm -hmm. is one important part of the movie. Uh, radicalism, radicality. Mm -hmm. So do you see, like in your performance during the movie, do you also see this radicalism as a sort of performance, something that you also wanted to put on screen? How did you prepare yourself for this? I think it, those kind of characters need a total devotion. You have to be there, you have to believe in what they do. You have to like all these action, terrorism, you, you have to, 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 uh, to trust your character and follow. Mm -hmm. So it was very like, um, it was a big commi commitment. And it was like, uh, you know, the, the bad zone we have, we were like always exploring in this zone. So it was very, very like something. So you discover things about yourself while doing Yeah, this. yeah. And maybe a sadness I didn't know I had about that. Yeah. Okay, interesting. That's what I would say. And for you? And, um, well, I, I, I find it uh, really interesting uh, because I've noticed how um, I had the chance to, to see and meet a little bit of these people during the, the spring 2012. Mm -hmm. And some, some appeared to me as being really strong in, in their radicality, but I found it beautiful because I knew that they were like doing something, and uh, it, it um, I found it hopeful sometimes to see how people are devoted to to their own projects and to their own cause. Um, yeah, so I, I was inspired by the people that I, I've walked in Astra with uh, during mm -hmm. the. the Spring 2012, mm -hmm. and at the same time, when I come, when I, when I, we're, when we are in Q and A, mm -hmm. I feel like there's a little bit of like the Spring 2012 with us mm. in in the, in the theater. The way people pass the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I have one last question for you. Um, so the movie got a lot of praise in, in Canada, but also starts to have a lot of praise also in the international. But you also had some strong critique on the social media from the people you were already talking about now. So the people mm. who uh, performed the radicality, the per mm. radicality you were performing in that movie mm. in some kind of way. So what did you think, do you have some words about those critiques that, you, that we can read on the social media right now from people who actually did the protest you yeah. are narrating? I mean, obviously the, you know, uh, the film that Simon and I wrote is uh, wrote and directed is written and directed by people who were not uh, directly involved in the student protest movement when it happened because we were not students back then. Mm -hmm. Someone who was inside the movement while it was happening. So I think, you know, obviously that's going to create some uh, resentment uh, with some people because they feel like. <gasps> They're kind of robbed of their own memories of the event. Mm -hmm. But that being said, this happens. I mean, there are two things at play here. One of these things is that 
even though it happened five years ago, it's still quite close. Mm -hmm. And so I think a bit, a bit more distance will allow, I think even these people who are really angry about the film right now, I think if they see the film maybe in five years or in 10 years, uh, they will be less sensitive about these uh, I think superficial issues that uh, make them hate the film uh, and they will be able to grasp the film as a work of art first mm -hmm. and not as something that should be reproducing their memories because obviously we don't have their memories because we're not them. And also the other, I think, uh, issue at play here is that there's kind of a, a malentendu, we say, in a misunderstanding. Uh, the film is not like the definitive account of spring 2012. It's a film that takes spring 2012 as a starting point, and we, we go much wider than that. You know, we're placing this short event in a much wider historical context, I think. And most of the film is taking place today, so it's mm -hmm. not solely about this event. So I think if you see the film in that way, even if you were involved in the events in 2012, then you can have a different perspective. But obviously right now, some people are very sensitive because it's so close to them that they, they just, you know, they, they can't see past their mm -hmm. uh, initial disappointment. Do you have some? Yeah, but at, at, some, at some point I find I find it interesting how people get mad because of um, of, a, of a success it has. Also, at the same time, mm. like people are, are re really reacting to it. But I'm I'm wondering if the movie would have not been nominated or if the movie would have not have been selected at uh, TIFF in Toronto. I, I'm wondering what how people would have react. And this is not about like the movie itself. It's just about I don't know the context. The context, yeah. yeah. And one thing I could add is that, you know, I would really encourage these people who are really angry, well, uh, you know, make your film or write your book or, you know, write your play mm -hmm. or write a song mm -hmm. about, you know, your view on these events. Yeah. We don't pretend that we, we own the truth about this moment. It's our personal point of view. And we're really looking and hoping that some other point of views will be coming out. So. <laughs> well, thank you for giving us your time, and I hope you're going to have a nice time in Berlin. And Thanks. we are happy to have you in the Tiddy Awards. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. <laughs>
they were uh, fictional characters who we uh, imagine could have been very much involved in this student pro protest movement. And uh, we pick up with them five years after the fact and trying to see where they're at uh, five years later uh, after having basically with, uh, they, they withdrew from society because they were uh, sad and bitter and, and angry about the outcome of their movement. And uh, at the moment where we pick up with them, they, they decide that they want to try and change the world again, but this time by resorting to much more radical means. So that's the film in a nutshell. After 12 semaines de grève, d'assemblée, de manifestation, d'arrêt. Nous ne prendrons pas de juste milieu. Thanks for being with us today. So Laurent, Charlotte, and Mathieu from uh, those who those who make revolutions. Alfway only dig their own graves. Sorry, <laughs> title in English, long title. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you today. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to know if you had any links with what happened in Quebec in 2012. So if you participated in the movement or if you've seen the movement from afar and what's your personal connection to it and how, it, how did it help you to build on what you already knew?